Well, I was telling you, I, I was going on and on babbling to myself about how <laughs> how what we're doing is we're giving Daryl here the opportunity to tell his side of the story because often the court of uh, public opinion has things wrong because the public doesn't know the full story behind everything. As we often, don't know don't the full story lot. behind anything. And because we don't know anything, you know, we really shouldn't have an opinion about the subject. And that goes with everybody that I see in the liberty movement, whether they're attacking Daryl Young or Lucas or Adam Kokesh. They don't know the true story about what is going on. Don't you agree with me? Oh, I, I totally agree. And um, I, I think it's a pretty important issue because it, it speaks to – the, the trust inside the uh, alternative media, you know what I'm saying? Like if 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 we have this issue coming from the uh, the Adam versus the Man team or that whole operation and everything, if we're going to grow the alternative media, we're going to have to make it viable as a source of information, as a business, as a you know for public relations wise, and and I think stuff like this is is ultimately bad for the uh the growth of the alternative media so that's one thing that really concerns me about it because uh i, I don't think anyone's going to be touching the numbers or the, you know kind of the level that alex jones is on but once you get down from that part of the pedestal um you know adam, adam kokesh had a pretty big voice he had a huge voice i mean he his live stream got you know people were watching his video which mean they had to be sitting in front of a computer where they had to have you know a semi good you know computer or a Wi-Fi connection in order to uh, tune into that and then you had people you know thousands and thousands of downloads I mean he made his living off of YouTube so it's you know quite impressive. Okay, well from what I understand, uh, Daryl is on the line and is uh, ready. All righty. Well, I'll just hand this over to you, buddy. All right. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for having me on, gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming on, Daryl. It's great to hear from you. So, uh, you. I mean, you you know what this is about. I mean, you probably know better than anybody what this is about. There's a lot of uh, mud flinging going around. There's a lot of accusations. And we just wanted to, uh, you know, me and you, we've known each other for a while. You were my organizer uh, for the Georgia area and the nationwide, uh, and the Fed that went on like a year ago. And we've been in contact ever since, you know, I like to think that we're friends and everything and, uh, we've never had any problems. So I just wanted to, uh, give you a, give you a voice from kind of a friendly platform. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why I decided to come on the show because you're one of the few people that I definitely still trust at this moment. So I appreciate the opportunity of you allowing me to come on and just let me start off by saying Ed and Liz, did not steal anything. So I don't know who's accusing those two of doing anything other than helping Adam move his, his operation to the next level or to the next step. But, yeah, there's a lot of talk going around saying that, you know, there's $50,000 missing, yada, yada, yada. For starters, Adam has not yet raised more than 25000 since he's been in jail. Now, the confu where the confusion is coming into play is right now they're waiting on an accounting report from me for about nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000 that was spent on expenses expenses for the operation. Now, for starters, if I stole money from Adam, why would I still be in the same fucking state where, this, where I was originally? I stayed here because I was under the impression that, you know, I was going to stay with the operation and I was going to continue working for Adam. If, if I knew I wasn't going to be working for Adam, I would have left prior to me having to move all of his stuff by myself. I apologize. Other than Brother Derek, who had a broken hand, and a few other people that had no knowledge of Adam Kokesh or Adam versus Man, they came to help off the strand of me. So I was basically left stranded. And Mike, you've been, you know, you were one of the reasons why I came to Adam versus Man because you, you're the one that plugged me up with Adam, saying, "Hey, I'm a good guy. Adam was looking help, and I was a loyal person, so he brought me on." Now, for people that are saying that, you know, I guess I was using Adam, this and that, people need to understand. When I first started working for Adam, my first three months, I took care of myself. Food, my car note, my $300 a month T-Mobile bill, I, I pay for that myself. So for people to say, hey, Adam is taking care of me, this and that, I was just eating off of Adam, not the case. No. Uh, and and to, even, even Adam, for anyone to say that, um, Adam was up front about uh, – the opportunity that it was he knew that everybody there also had uh i don't want to say ulterior motives but that everybody 
wanted to have a voice, wanted to kind of build their own stature up, and it was a it was a give give. You know what I mean? We work for Adam, and we yeah. build ourselves because it's known. It's not like anyone's going to be working there for twenty years and getting a friggin' four hundred one k. You know what I mean? So yeah, exactly. You know the way Adam looked at it, he said, "If you can bring him a profit, you'll then get your cut." So that's just the way that he, he did his business. And of course, a lot of things were, were verbal contracts, yada, yada, yada. But the big issue is, is I'm being accused of stealing Adam money. What people don't know, understand or don't know is Adam bills were months past due. So he gave me the green light to go ahead and start paying the bills because if anybody remember after Philadelphia, you know, after they shut down the internet, you know, we had to broadcast the podcast from McDonald's. So ever since Philly, we started, you know, we had backup internet service. We was running off three different internet services. So in case, you know, the NSA decided they wanted to shut off our internet, we'll have a backup internet service. You know, recently the lights were cut off on us twice. You know, all of these expenses add up. So, you know, as I said, the confusion is they're just waiting for me to release what I spent on what category because, as I said, I had to move all of Adam's stuff by myself. So by the time I was ready to get situated and start opening up my boxes, like all of this just got – I got thrown underneath the bus, and you know the reason why Adam decided to let me go was because he was in jail. He found out he wasn't going to be receiving bail, so he decided, hey, he's, he's no longer in need of a, I guess, a, a production manager, so he let me go. So I'm like, but that, that, that really startled me because, like, I was the only person by Adam's side after everybody left me stuck. Like, for Adam to just do that to me, I, I, I was kind of shocked. So, you know, I, I decided to, you know, shut everything down, take a day or two off, and just relax. And when I decided to relax or, or get away for a little bit, everybody started talking to me saying, oh, hey, I went AWOL like Lucas. Now, Lucas Jules, that's a totally different story. I'm not really going to comment on that and give a no-name person a name, but that dude is totally shaky, but that's another long story. You know, Adam also told me, you know, to negotiate with him and, you know, offer him an offer for the Facebook page that he took hostage of He's not telling the people that he did receive money from me, and he has yet to still give up that page. So that's another part of that money that's, that, that when it's missing that I'm going to be releasing in the near future. Okay, so, I mean, basically people are just waiting for you. Certain people within the Adam Camper are waiting for you to release accounting information. Correct. Yeah, because it's it 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 not even that much that was missing because most of the stuff went towards you know his, his phone bills. I spent $120 a day just on – jail phone calls for you to run an operation from jail cost money and you know we cut a four thousand dollar check to the lawyer you know if after they go through all the expenses that shit adds up and i guess i wasn't working on the speed that they wanted me to and i'm like hey dude you don't know what the fuck i just been through by myself so getting i'm not on your time you're gonna wait for me to get myself situated because nobody thought about my well-being as i was doing all of this stuff for adam no, I, I hear you. So, um, I mean, I guess you are going to release that, though, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm just trying to get all my stuff together. As I told, you know, his current manager, Jeffrey Phillips, you know, I didn't want to release 80% of the information, and then two weeks later or a week later or a day later, I come across, you know, a letter stating more information that could have been, you know, helping me out in my defense. You know, if anybody, anybody that knows me know I'm a loyal motherfucker to the end. I have no reason to, to steal from Adam. Like, dude, if I stole from Adam, why would I still be in the same state? That's that's what that's what startles me because, you know, right before I had to do this move, Ed and Liz went to Delaware, left me in the house by myself. Not attacking Ed, Ed and Liz once again because said they're just another victim to this whole situation. I love Ed and Liz. They were the only two that were actually there to a certain point before, you know, I had to call Derek and Cantwell. Speaking of Derek and Cantwell, I paid about $600 for Derek to come in per Adam. You know, Adam told me, you know, if I thought things were getting a little shaky, you know, bring, bring he gave me a list of people to, you know, call in. It, and you were one of those people, Michael. You know, you know, I, I reached out to you saying, hey, you know, things are looking a little shaky. I'm going to need a little help. Because Adam told me, you know, continue the podcast, keep it going. And I was just following Adam's instructions. And I guess in the long run, I got used and got burnt. But it's part of the game. And I'm being targeted like I'm the enemy when I did nothing but be loyal and stand by his side when nobody was. Because... Everybody totally just bailed out on him, and I thought that was wrong. So I said, hey, you know what? I'm going to stay here to the end. Yeah, and uh, I think you're experiencing some of the bitter part of this this whole uh, movement of ours, this whole thing, is that um, because the government is so bad and they have such a bad history, it, it invites 
a lot of uh, paranoia. It invites a lot of people to be distrustful and stuff like that. And from the eyes of the people who aren't involved, it's all very mysterious and it's all hearsay and things like that. And that's one of the main reasons I wanted to uh, bring you on this show. And um, me personally, I've completely – you know, disconnected from the whole thing after after it happened. I haven't really commented on it publicly. I haven't really got involved because I I I don't know the details. I wasn't there anymore. You know, and um, so I, that. But that's again another reason why I wanted to have you on is because uh, because I don't know and I, I wanted to f- uh, figure it out as opposed to kind of you know attack you and demonize you and everything like that. I appreciate that. And also, one more thing to clarify, you know, I guess there's a rumor saying that I had a house full of Adam's stuff other than what was in the storage. What people don't understand is, you know, the storage was a not a, a, a what is it, a climate control storage. So I wasn't going to put everything in there because they would just charge an additional fee. And, of course, I had all of Adam equipment because we were broadcasting a podcast from my new residence, which was per Adam. He told me, keep the show going on. That's why, you know – after he decided to cut everybody go, Derek came in from Houston. I was not at the final place for Derek, at the final place for the other staff members that were in the house because he just decided to, you know, shut down operation, and these people had nowhere to go. So that I was here holding the shit down, as I normally do, making sure that everybody were taken care of and, you know, just following instructions with Adam. I guess I don't know what happened. Somebody here must be bipolar because it's like, People are saying one thing, and then next minute they're saying something completely different. They're being real two-faced. But I have written letters from Adam stating what he wants me to do with, with, I guess, with his past due bills. And hold on one second. Uh, um, what's that? I guess the way I what, what I I'm sorry. Let me finish, let me say one last thing. What I feel is what what's what's going on is he wants his bills paid. His bills got paid, and what he's trying to do is portray me as being the enemy, so he can reverse his check get that money back in account and keep his bills being paid, which I feel is totally wrong. It's if anybody has worked with me or Adam himself knows I was the only person loyal in his corner. So for him to attack me the way that his camp, his new camp is, is doing is totally wrong. So uh, we've we got a couple minutes until our break. I, I hope you can stay with us until after the jump. Uh, but um... <clears throat> You still there, Daryl? Yeah, I'm still here, brother. Hey, hey, hey this is Keith. How you doing? I, I I just wanted to let hey, Mike uh you know kind of take over there for a couple minutes because you know he um he, he knows you on a personal level but you know honestly I I wanted I, I wanted to hear it from you because you know the court of pub, public opinion can be brutal and I've seen it across many people's Facebook pages in the past couple months and I try not to you know get involved myself. But uh, we'll we'll be coming into a break here in a couple minutes. Do you, do you think you could stay through the uh, break? Sure. All right. That's awesome. That's awesome. Definitely. Now, um, cool. I I got I got I got a I got a question for you. All right. Um, you you personally don't yeah. like all right uh, Lucas, right? And a lot of people don't. Well, I, and the the well, whole no versus the man Lucas. team kind now, of feels people, that way. Yeah. Now, is there now, is there a Adam, reason behind that? Is there anything that you know could be told to why everybody dislikes him so much? Because I believe now, it goes all the way up the chain there. <laughs> I see. I don't. I don't know why Lucas right now is attacking me. That that's what's really fucking me up. Because from his stay there, Adam never paid him. From day one, I've oh, any time I ate, I always ordered whether it, whether it was Chinese food or pizza. I always broke bread with Lucas, like. As I always say, the way he's treating me, I need to claim you as a de- as a, a dependent and get a, de- a, a tax a tax uh, de- uh, whatever they call that shit back to you. Cause I'm like, dude, I was taking care of you like a child, not like a little sadist. You no, know, this allegation that he stole Adam, uh, switched Adam Bitcoin address, and he he stole money from Adam, and you know this this uh, talk about how some chick that he was running with possibly could have been a fed, and you know. That wasn't stuff that came from me originally, where I never put anything past anybody. With the way things were going with Lucas, I always said, hey, possibility, I'm just, you know, staying my distance. Hey, hey Daryl, Daryl, can you keep time. that thought? We're going to yes, go sir. to break. Yes, sir. In 1997, a high school shooting was stopped by a vice principal with a gun. In 1998, a middle school shooting was ended by a neighbor with a gun. 
In 2002, a terrorist attack was stopped by a school guard and a teacher with a gun. After September 11th, pilots began carrying guns to protect their passengers. Let's give our schools and teachers the same option. Sign the petition at DefendSchools.com. Hi, I'm Trevor Moore. Due to the recent revelations that in order to fight terrorism, the NSA has been using a secret court order to spy on every single Verizon and AT&T customer, Americans have become outraged and concerned about their rights to privacy. But along with that concern comes a feeling of hopelessness. I mean, what can we do? Vote in new leaders? Well, the problem is that during an election, each candidate pretends to not be an asshole. Then when they get the job, they reveal that they've actually been a complete asshole this entire time. No, elections are of no use. The only way to fight back against our country's excessive wiretapping and data mining is to make it irrelevant. That's why we're launching Operation Everyone Talk Like a Terrorist all the time. If we all openly discuss terrorist plots in each of our phone conversations, then eavesdropping on those phone conversations becomes pointless. It's simple. We just need to work it into our daily vernacular. For example, instead of saying, I love you, you could describe a terror attack. The larger the scale, the more you love the person. Hi, Mom. I just got out of school. Can you pick me up? I'll be there in 15 minutes. I'm going to use a truck bomb to blow up the Brooklyn Bridge. I'm mailing anthrax to Pierce to Morgan. Or nonsense about God's will being great could mean affirmative. Hey, man, they have a 730 show, and do you think you can make it in time? God is merciful and his love is unchanging. Did you already get me a ticket? And those are just a few examples. You can make up your own. Have fun with it. But it's time for us to stand up and protect our rights. Because those assholes aren't going to. Do you have a group or organization founded on the principles of personal liberty, health freedom, or accountable government? We invite you to check out Same Side Entertainment. Get connected with leaders in the liberty movement like Tom Woods, Kevin Gutzman, Jack Hunter, Robert Scott Bell, Michael Scheuer, and many more. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and our website at www.samesideentertainment.com. Again, that's www.samesideentertainment.com. Same Side Entertainment, connecting you with the education and resources you need. Tired of living in a violent society? If every citizen was armed, no one would be dumb enough to shoot people. It's exactly the ethos our founding fathers had when they wrote the Constitution and then changed it, which is what makes it sacred now. Come mingle with safety-minded people like you at the Liberty City Gun Club. Our nation is still the world leader in one thing, armaments. Nothing says excitement like a night out with a small-caliber semi-automatic weapon. Get social at the Liberty City Gun Club. Hi, I'm Steve. I'm Irene. I'm Lisa. My name is Tom. I'm a graphic designer. College freshman. Stay-at-home mom with a full-time job. Scholar on social policy and a barista. And I'm just like you. I'm an Obama supporter. I support President Obama. But the president needs your help. Our president can't launch into another war without you. And remember, we promise to support him no matter what. Together, we can do it. That's why we here at the Americans for Whatever Barack Obama Wants, Did You Know He's Friends with Jay-Z, have launched a Kickstarter campaign to fund World War III. And America is dead-ass broke, so our goal is to raise $1.6 trillion on behalf of the U.S. government. That's where you come in. Even a small donation would make all the difference. When I first saw the president speak in 2008 in a YouTube clip posted to my Facebook page, I knew he was going to be right all the time. So I support World War III and IV and any moon war the president may want to start. I mean, there is no way that he or the cabal of corporate interests, spy agencies and shadow bankers that tell him what to do would ever mislead us. <laughs> a $25 donation will get you a piece of rubble from a war-torn Middle Eastern country kissed by Senator Lindsey Graham. A $100 donation gets you a day pass to leave your local refugee camp. You'll probably end up in a refugee camp, but it'll have free Wi-Fi. So please, Help us reach our goal of $1.6 trillion so we can make World War III a reality. Why? Because Obama. Because Obama. <laughs> Thanks for listening to FPRN. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. If you'd like to start your own show with FPRN, 
advertise with us, or donate to the network or to your favorite shows, check out our website at www.fprnradio.com. Snatch from Jimmy Fisk, just 19, stacking up cream from earning digits and burning bridges, running the streets forever vicious. He bought himself some time and this Robin had three wishes to swim with bigger fish. Welcome the back the to the Big Plantation, never, never live on FPRNRadio.com. And we thank our listeners for hanging in there tonight. We have a really interesting conversation going on here. And we have Daryl on the line. Daryl, are you still there? Still here, brother. My statement should have. Uh, been phrased the way I took care of Lucas. I should have claimed him as a dependent and received a tax credit for the way I took care of his ass as a status. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, 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 the way he's attacking me, man, is like it really hurts me. Like a son tapping me to my face because the reason why he had that manager title was because I told Adam, "Hey, I can't be production manager and business manager." You, you know, so I told him, "Hey, Lucas is looking for some attention." You know, our previous manager, Kim Woods. She was going crazy, so we let her go. And I told Adam, yo, dude, I already work 12, 15 hours a day. I can't be a business manager as well, bro. That's too much on my shoulders. So, you know, Lucas, who just wanted to take care of Mark, we said, hey, let's give you opportunity and let's see how you can run things as being business manager, where, you know, he didn't really work out too well. So that's, that's another long story. All right. Yeah, Daryl, yeah, I got a question yeah. for you. Um, what, what would sure. you describe your relationship with Adam Kokesh as of this moment? Um, I really have no hatred towards him. I, you know, Adam has a history of using people. So, you know, it, it was kind of expected, but it just kind of hurt the way that he left me stuck. Like after I moved all of his stuff by myself, that that, that kind of hurt me. But, you know, don't hold grudges. Just move forward like Obama. Hail Hitler. You feel me? No. <laughs> <laughs> kind of scary. But, you know, he, he he's going through a lot right now. So, you know, I'm not holding any grudges against him. I just hope that we can, you know, put this behind us and just, you know, him really – I'm not the people, you know, the way that he went about things were wrong because attacking of all people, me, that that was that that hurt, man. That really hurt, bro. Okay, and uh, Daryl, we have uh, we actually have callers on the line. I'm going to ask you one more question before we uh, we get to them. Um, Cool. There, there was another allegation on there, something. I, and honestly, I don't even know all the details. But there was another allegation on there about something uh, on uh, George Donnelly's article um, about alleged forged checks and stuff like that. Can you kind of uh, uh, comment on that? Yes, I'd be more than happy to. You know, Adam left us his debit card and what was left of his checks to, to pay bills and pay staff. At one point, you know, I guess they put a, a hold on his debit card because I guess they were seeing a lot of transactions that they weren't familiar with. So Adam said, you know, eventually he'll give me full access to the bank account. And, you know, he told us, you know, to go ahead and find some checks to go ahead and get the funds for what we needed. Where, you know, of course, nobody else in the house had an account to cash those checks. So I use my account because, you know, stuff needs to get done. And as always, I'm not ride or die, do it up down for whatever. So I said, hey, let's go ahead and put that into my account so we're going to get those funds. Now, when it comes to those checks, I did not sign not one of those checks. So I'm just going to leave it at that right there for those that, that's attacking me. Like, come on. I'm, I'm not blaming anybody other than, you know, the person that was in charge, which is Adam. He should have been one stepping up saying, hey. He said this, he said that, but as we can see, that's not going on right now. So that's why I have those handwritten letters of Adam instructing me of certain things that he wanted me to do. You know, a lot of stuff that he were ask, he was asking us to do was a lot of inappropriate things. That's that's why I'm like, I didn't want to release any, everything, but it's like the way they're attacking me, I need to go ahead and do so to cover up myself. But that's not who I am to throw people underneath the bus like that. That's that's not what we do where I come from. Gotcha. Okay, so we're going to bring in our first caller. Uh, are you there, caller? Caller from uh, yes, 804, are you there? Yes, sir, I'm here. Okay. And what it, uh, what's your name? Uh, this is Nathan Cox. How's it going? I appreciate you having me on. Hey, Nate, Nathan, how you doing, doing buddy? On, Long time no see. Yeah, I haven't seen you all for a while. Um, I'm actually I, I'm actually here at my church. I just got word that uh, Daryl was doing this interview, so I figured I'd call in to ask a few questions um, because I haven't been able to get a hold of him recently. Um, you, you have not been reaching out to me. And the last time you reached out to me is when you came to the house and we spoke and you told me it was all love, brother. And the way you're going about things is wrong too, bro. Like the way okay. you've been handling business, you know, it's totally inappropriate, but I'm not going to attack you. I'm going to let you speak, brother. 
All right, well, in a posting that George Adami made last week, George said that you told him that five checks that were made payable to you and drawn out on Adam versus the Man account were signed by Ed Yealy. Is, is that correct? Did you tell George that? I told him that. Okay. Well, Ed denies this emphatically. There's a total of there are a total of five checks that were made payable to you. Correct. Um, four of them were written on July 12th. One of those were because. paid for $400. One of them was for $1,300. One of them was for $1,000. Uh, excuse me, not 1,300, 1,200. And the last one was made for $15,000. Yes, sir. And um, so my question to you is, in, in what bank account were these checks deposited or cashed? I already explained that earlier. I guess you missed the interview, sir. And yeah, now, yeah, I was over here. Yeah, gotcha. That twelve hundred dollar check, he had instructed, you know, for me for him for me to pay myself three hundred, pay Ed three hundred, pay Liz three hundred, and pay our former employee Jeremy three hundred. So that's where that one check came into play. That fifteen hundred dollar check, that should have went towards his fifty eight. $5,800 uh, pass-through rent amount, all of his pass-through bills, and a down payment for a new uh, piece of property to keep the, the podcast going. So all of that stuff, as I said, was, was supposed to be to pay bills and to pay employees. So when I deposited the rest of the money, which was about four or $5,000, you know, all the stuff had already been spent on expenses, on moving. Because, brother, I called you one day and said, hey, but I thought you called me and said, if, if there's anything I need, just let me let you know. I said, hey, Nathan, I need you I need you to apply on this house for me so we can keep this, this operation going. Your response was, hey, you know what? If you need anybody, if you need help moving, I'll come and help you move. You didn't help with the credit application for the new operation, nor did you help me move. So how can you come in and act like you've been down since day one, bro? I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up, Daryl, because you said earlier, uh, in fact, when we came back from the commercial break, um, that's when I started listening, and you said that you moved everything by yourself. But uh, from what I was told, you hired some Mexicans, and all the Mexicans wow. threw Adam's property in, uh, into the storage You know, what's facility. funny What's funny is you can verify this with Derek. The Mexicans came to the house. Even the Mexicans didn't want to move Adam's shit. We still okay, like, well, Damn. I, I'm just <laughs> asking you about the, the $17,000 worth of checks that you've cashed or deposited. So. I just want to know, did you cash them or deposit them? And if so, I, whether you cash or deposit, what bank did you do it at? Have you not seen any of Adam pass through bill that recently got paid since you're so a part of this operation, sir? I'm just asking you, where did you cash or deposit the checks that were made out to you, Daryl? You have all the information. Why are you asking these questions? You have, well, you work with, just, with, just answer the question. On, what dude. bank was it? I feel like... You know what? You're you're another snake, and I feel like you're now recording this conversation. You need to go back and listen to the podcast, bro. You're one you of the two faces people I'm talking about. Why? Why won't you tell us what bank you cashed your deposit? Dude, you have all the information. I just, I feel like you're recording this phone call. Okay, like, well, you, 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 I, you, I, you, I you don't want this to turn hold into on, a hold fight. On, hold on, Nathan. Um, Nathan, Nathan. It's crazy I, that you. Hold on, hold on. Let me say something. Hold on. Nope. Shut your mouth. It's crazy how you're throwing and people with feds that, that had nothing to do with this. Like you stopped the fucking status. That's why I, I'm that's why trying to I ask a the, simple question about where you deposited or cashed the checks that were made out. Dude, it's a simple question. Dude, Was it Wachovia, dude, Bank of America? You know, you know, you know what it is, bro. I got to tell you this all over the podcast, man. No, Come I, on, bro. I, I, you, what, I, no, I don't know where it was. Snake. You're a snake, bro. You're a snake. Okay, well, let, let me get to you all my questions, and if you don't want to answer sure. that one. So none of the signatures matches Adam's signature, according to Adam's father. Four of them because Adam was in similar. jail. Four of them appear to be similar, and one is distinctly different. That one that's distinctly different is the $15,000 check. Four of those checks appear to have been written by the okay. same person. Who wrote okay. the check? Did you make out the check? Was, I did not write one check, sir. So who made I use my – I'm sorry? Did Martha write the checks? No, she did not. She wasn't even there, bro. She had nothing to do with this, bro. So I don't know why you're bringing up Martha. I don't know why you're attacking Wanda. They had nothing to do with this, bro. As as when you went to when you went to visit Wanda the other day, you was questioning her, saying how I'm telling y'all y'all need to stop harassing her, which is right. She has nothing to do with this. Why are y'all harassing innocent people? Hey, you're one of those. I'm going to change the subject. You're one of those. No, you're one of those. Two faces snakes I was talking about. So I okay. guess you're not going to answer any of my questions. Okay, I, I just uh, – is there any final points that you want to uh, wrap up with there, Nate? Or, uh, I mean, I, I really don't want this to descend into, like, a, an argument or a, a shouting match or anything like that. 
Uh, do you have anything to wrap up on? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I would really like to know where, why was the $15,000 check so large? Where, where did all that money go, Daryl? Because there was one last check, and I had to use that to pay off his past due rent amount because his rent was $2,800 a month. He left me with so much debt in my hands to take care of. I also had to pay Mike Salvi for purchase, purchasing his merch for him where we couldn't even do that. I told Mike, yo, dude, we're low on funds. I'm going to have to pay you back another time. And he totally understood. Dude, I want to let you know that I spoke to the landlord personally about two weeks ago. He said he didn't get a dime from you the last two and a half months, okay? Dude, I went to Illinois. Also, we 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 also, a number of ATM charges totaling $1,220 for cash. Where do these funds go? There are also charges Dude. for Target, McDonald's, Jiffy Lube, a dry cleaners, Pizza Hut, totaling several thousand dollars. Were these re related to helping free Adam? Driving people back and forth to court, using multiple vehicles. I have to pay people to drive their vehicles, bro. And he told us to go to Smoke Fest multiple times. Driving to Philadelphia costs money. And putting I hope miles on my vehicle. I'm sorry? I hope you have some, I hope you have some evidence from Adam. All of his letters that he wrote to me, bro, that you wasn't there to, to take part of none of this. I took care of all this shit by myself. I said you weren't there to apply for this new house, and you weren't there with this move. So for you to say, oh, Mexicans came and, and moved shit, how do you know that? You wasn't there, nigga. Please. I, I'm telling you what somebody told me, people from the old crew. They, nobody uh, was I, there I, with that you, move other than Derek. Nobody else was there you, other than uh, Derek. I appreciate you not answering most of my questions. All right, well, we do mm -hmm. have yeah, other yeah, callers on the line. Uh, Nate, I think we're going to have to uh, cut you. Um, but thanks for your call. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, that – wow, I – yeah, I, did, I don't want this to turn into a uh, a big argument or a big fiasco, but uh, it yeah, is a heated he's situation. Accused, yeah, he's, he's one of those dudes. Yeah, he's one of those dudes accusing me, but what was not there, not one step of the way. And so I, I asked him. Adam says we need to move this operation. I asked him to use his credit since he's a close friend of Adam. He said, you know what? I'll help. He totally avoided that, saying, hey, he'll use his credit and saying, hey, he'll help me move. When it came time to move, he was nowhere to be found. So yeah, brother Nathan. There when you need him. Gotcha. So, um, yeah, I mean, obviously he was asking about some of this accounting, which I I heard you earlier say that you're gonna uh, you're gonna account for. But yeah, I can I could definitely see you, uh, you know, taking your time with that. It's it's become such a hot button topic. It's become something that's playing out in the public eye, unfortunately. And uh, you know, all this is the kind of shit that comes with that. Um, so, all right, we're gonna. Uh, we're going to go to our next caller here. Uh, they are coming from area code 904. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the rat, Lucas Jules. What? What do you say? Dude, you what say? happened? When I, when I stepped to you, you totally backed down, bro. Now you're a tough guy? Now you're a tough guy? <laughs> yeah. I, I, know you, I know you remember when I stepped to you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now you're a tough guy, man. Come on. This is who is this? This is Lucas, nine oh four. That's where he he ran back to Jacksonville after all the shit went down. Oh shit! Yeah, we still know my area code. So so, Lucas, uh, what what uh what question do you got for for Daryl on this whole sad tragedy? No, I think I think it's I think I think it's telling about his personality that the first thing he says to me is him automatically something hostile towards me. You know? Because I know you're coming to talk shit, bro. It's what you do. You're a fucking snake, too, bro. You, you were the first one to bail on us. Oh, well, scary ass. hold on. Without getting well, into anything personal, me. is there is there a legitimate uh, a question from you, Lucas? I mean, I, I don't want to, like, uh, air out dirty laundry. Uh, you know, I, I came, I, I did this to hopefully, you know, air out the issue here and, uh, you know, I, I don't want it to descend into anything super negative. So, if there's any, do you have a legitimate question, Lucas? I, I don't. You didn't go to argue, did you? Hey, you're breaking up. I can't really hear you that good. I said I, I just don't want this to uh, turn into like a big argument where you guys are getting personal with each other. Uh, did you have any uh, any I'm questions totally, for Daryl? I'm totally get personal with Lucas because he, he he he's on my shit list right now. Oh uh, well, apparently I, 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 I took care in your bed, you bro. That that hurts me, man. I shouldn't have fed you all those days, man. I feel bad wasting yeah. my money on you, man. Yeah. So, um, uh, so Lucas, what what is the uh, question? What are you, what are you calling about? I just what? I just think you should turn over all the you know all all the bank records. You know what I'm saying? 
like it's going to be very evident at that point what happened. Okay, so yeah. sure. basically, that, that seems to be the common thread between our two callers here is is providing the accounting, which Daryl, you you said earlier in the interview um, that you would provide. Uh, can we uh, expect a? Uh, is there any kind of time frame that that people can work on? I mean, I understand it's probably a, well, a lot of different transactions going to a lot of different things, so uh, it might well, take some Nathan, time. Nathan but... is still Nathan Cox is still holding some of my personal items hostage after I gave up. Adam stuff immediately after he told me and Derek he didn't want the podcast to move on. So, so, so you will be able to to verify everything to either the landlord, like uh, like Nate was talking about, or whatever these other funds are. Well, when it, when it comes to the landlord, you know, I was going to court for Adam's debt because the landlord was suing both me and Adam. Where I'm like, dude, how can you sue me where I'm not even on the lease? You know, me and the landlord, the, the day we went to court. And, you know, the judge was like, you got to prove how, you know, I'm responsible for this guy's debt. Me and the landlord sat down and spoke and said, hey, you know, we're going to take, you know, the deposit check and only pay one month's rent. Where I didn't get a chance to go that, that, that I guess, move past that and pay that amount because Adam took all, I guess, uh, power out of my hands to handle his finances. So I gave up everything. I gave up the rest of the, the money that was in his account. I gave up the equipment. I gave up his truck that was dead for like months. Like, his truck totally wasn't moving for, like, a month and a half. And I had to where, charge that shit to get it where, out of the house. Where's the, where's the proof of him authorizing you to spend this money? In the letters he wrote me to pay Ed and Liz. As I told you the other day, dude, Jeremy got paid before you because you was worth nothing to Adam. You generated no money. That's why you got sour because in the meeting. You, look, your yeah. personal attacks show, show mm-hmm. all the resentment you have. Look, people just want to know the facts. People don't want to know all this little... Drama and speaking of facts, that. Nathan didn't say nothing about $50,000 just now. Nathan didn't say nothing about $50,000, and that's what I'm being accused of. $50,000, like, they're throwing people ahead up with bullshit to have them try to attack me. But you know what? You can attack me all you want. You can't touch me, bro. You know that. You're drooping. The point is, is, the point is, is when, when it becomes matters of tens of thousands of dollars missing, it's a matter of grand larceny. Check fraud, you know, forgery. Okay. Like these, these are serious. These are serious things, and I don't, I don't think you understand the seriousness of what you've done. And in a free society, it's not like a state. It's not like you're gonna call the feds on me, bro. It's not like a fucking state. We know you got a history of running with the feds. In a, free, in a free society, these acts would be punished, you know, because in a free society, you can't violate someone's property rights and steal their. Like you did Adam with his page? Sure like you did Adam with his page? Society is, as Cantwell pointed out in his article. I'm not sure if you're a true libertarian, so I don't know if I should hold that standard. Well, from, yeah, from what Campbell I'm got, hearing, got, from what got, I'm got hearing is kind of, uh, you know, someone who stayed out of it this whole time. I'm hearing, you know, mudslinging, and I'm hearing basically I need time to, to, uh, to provide the evidence. So, I mean, it, as long as, as the evidence can be That's produced, I don't think there should be a problem. And if that evidence can be produced without a... A whole bunch of ugliness, you know what I mean? It, like, think of it like a court case. You're not going to see, uh, you know, the jurors lashing out at, at, at whoever is accused and say, "Oh, well, you're a statist or you're a fraud and and, and all this shit." So, I would like to yeah. get to the bottom of it without all the ugliness. Well, um, well Daryl, 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 uh, let me interrupt here. Uh, what were you talking about uh, sure. with the page? What What were you saying about that? Oh yeah, um, Lucas took Adam um, Facebook. Uh, page hostage, and he's still yet to give that up. So, is that true? All right. Well, this is what happened with the Facebook page. All right. Um, whenever I left, before I left, actually, right when Adam got arrested, I changed the passwords on everything because, as this has been proven, that none of these people well, yeah. are worthy of trust. Like it's been proven, you mishandled tens of thousands of dollars. At Tens of thousands of dollars, dude. Okay, so it said, when, when, I, when I drove to Jacksonville, I, 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 I called you to meet up with you. You were scared because, you know, I wanted to talk to you face-to-face and find out what really happened with you because you went AWOL, bro. You totally went AWOL, but, yeah. Uh, I'm going to be in this interview 15 minutes. I got things I got to handle. Yeah, so I'm going I'm to I'm let him wrap it up real quick. Go ahead, bro. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're not going to interrupt me. Cool. Um, well, um, the point is is that They've, they've proven through their own track record. Like I didn't need to prove anything. They've proven that they're not to be trusted. You know, they've proven that they misallocate funds. They've proven that they can't be handled with simple things. Whenever Daryl's running around, uh, you know, wearing Adam's clothes, sleeping in Adam's bed, watching Adam's TV. 
you know. Oh my god! Oh my god! They can't be trusted. So I, I mean, like, I, I don't really feel like I need to be like, oh, this is, you know, this is why I did. I mean, it's like, look at what they've done. Yes, this is why I did it because they're, you know, functioning retards, and I'm not to trust them with anything. Yes. Yes. Yes, well, if, if, uh, if, if you don't mind, uh, Lucas, I'd like to ask you one question. Um, you, you said that you did change the password, and I know that certain positions have changed there. Is everybody who, who needs access to whatever account or whatever Facebook change, is that all settled? Oh, yeah. Any, any, I, I told Adam, and I spoke to the Adam to new manager. Uh, that Bill is no longer affiliated with that person, man. Um, yes, sir. I spoke. I spoke to Jeffrey, and uh, I've given anyone who Jeffrey wanted contributor status to be a contributor. Contributor, not admin. So you still have full control of the page. Uh, said that Jeffrey didn't want Bill to be not a contributor. I immediately went on there and made the switch. Uh, he can post whatever he wants. Like I'm not limiting the Facebook in any way. Uh, and I've made a promise that you know whenever I can speak to Adam and I feel like he knows everything. Uh, you know, I'll give it back, but uh, that hasn't happened yet. And the first conversation I had with Adam whenever he was, you know, originally arrested for Virginia um, was him telling me to pass over these passwords. Like, it showed that he had received their side of the story, a very biased side, and, you know, they overthrew me with force. And, hey, uh, Okay, yeah. so we we only have uh, three minutes left before our break, and then after the break, we're gonna have to yeah. go to our other guests. But um, so the the, the, cool. the yeah. two things I, that I, I would like to wrap on for with with uh, each of you is is Daryl. You know, I, obviously there's a lot of heat on you, and I, I think that's unfortunate. Um, you're saying that you have everything that you need to clear your name, and I, so I think the question becomes of when it, when ca- when is a timetable that could be released so that you can clear your name and all the all the heat will probably just drop because and th- this is why I didn't want to get involved because I want to give everyone the benefit of the doubt cool yeah and said I'm going to take my time on this I'm on nobody's schedule because I wasn't on their schedule I'm going to take my time when I choose to release it I definitely will do so in a uh, proper manner to you know protect myself as well as Adam and I'm not going to release everything that he wanted me to do because he did a lot of crazy shit and Lucas man I said dude up until recently, it was the only time I started attacking you, bro. Like, me and you, we, we were cool, bro. Like, I fucking fed you. I fucking, anytime I smoked, you were there with me, bro. Like, we were tight, man. Like, for you to, for you to, the way you've been attacking me, bro, I said, that's, that's another slap to my face. But it's all good, man. I ain't going to hate you forever, bro. Not the end of the world. And and the, the last thing I'd like to wrap up with on, on your uh, side, Lucas, is basically you were saying that, uh, you were saying that, Basically, you still have admin access to the to the page, and until you can clear everything up with Adam, uh, that you could you'll give it back, correct? Correct. Yeah. No. I mean, me and Jeffrey are on good terms, and uh, you know, we speak semi often, and there's no hostility or any problems with the page. Like, okay, so we only have about a little bit more than a minute. A little bit more than a minute left. Um, cool. What exactly would make you not want to just? Uh, is there something? Is there a threat? Is there is there uh, something damaging to your name that's going on that's not making you uh, just give it up? Or uh... I mean, like it's it's the kind of false statement that they made about me before, uh, and. You know, I'm not going to go over the kind of false things they said about me, but... Uh, it's like, you put me into that category like I had something to do with that, bro. That would, had nothing to do with me. That's not like, for you to throw me underneath the bus too, bro, that shit is, that shit's fucked up, man. Yeah, so, uh, all right, we're we're coming yeah. up against the break here in a second. Um, I want to thank both of you guys for calling. I I can't believe that the callers that we had sure. we had. But um, the last thing I'd like to to <laughs> ask you, Daryl, is just a timetable. Is there is there any kind of timetable of what you think it's going to take to kind of get all your ducks in a row to kind of end all of this? Yeah, Probably thirty try- seconds. Yeah, yeah. I tried. I was going to have everything settled by last Monday, but I said right now I still have my personal items being held hostage. Where Are you I told someone. I totally put Adam personal items, you know, b- before mine, where I should have been worrying about my shit. So, you know, in due time, bro, all that shit will be resolved. And Lucas, I'll see you again, man. Hopefully, you know, we can talk like men. All right. Well, thanks a lot for coming. Thanks a lot for coming on, and we are going to go to break. Coming right back at you at the Big Plantation. <laughs> 